Welcome back, networking enthusiasts. Today, we'll dive into the world of load balancing with NF tables. I will show you how to distribute traffic in a round robin manner, as well as how to achieve session affinity. We'll also learn about number generators and hashing. My name is Philip. Let's get started. Load balancing is a technique to distribute incoming traffic across multiple servers. Its primary goal is to ensure that no single server is overwhelmed with too much traffic while others remain underutilized. This helps optimize resource utilization, improve performance and enhance the overall reliability and availability of a system. Here's a video where you can learn more about load balancing in general. Why are we even considering load balancing with NF tables? You may say, there are better tools for the task like AJProxy, Nginx, or Envoy. That's absolutely true, and you should pick those dedicated solutions if you need to balance network traffic, as they have health checks, sessions persistence, and connection pooling. However, in some cases, for example, balancing network traffic between Kubernetes pods, doing it via NetFilter framework makes much more sense. Uh, first benefit is its simplicity. We don't need any additional software to perform load balancing. Everything is already built in. Second thing is that the NetFilter framework resides in the kernel, so you get reduced latency and lower resource utilization compared to user space applications. Load balancing with NF tables is usually done by performing destination address translation. Clients send traffic to our firewall, where the destination IP gets updated to point to one of the backend servers. Before you proceed, I highly recommend checking out my video on the destination address translation. Okay, the question is, how to get a DNAT rule to balance traffic to different backend servers? By default, the DNAT rule is predefined and direct traffic to a specific backend server. We are aiming for a dynamic approach where the traffic is routed to the different backend servers for each request. For that to happen, there is a very smart feature of NF tables called a number generator. What it does is, what do you think it does? <laughs> it allows you to generate random or sequential numbers that you can use in your firewall rule. To set up a number generator, you specify the numgen keyword, then you need to advise the type of generator. It can be sequential, for that we use INC keyword, or random, with random keyword. Next, you need to specify a mandatory parameter that is modulus, that defines the upper boundary that is never reached by generated numbers. For example, if we set mod to 5, for the incremental generator, we'll get numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Mind that numbers are in order and 5 is never reached. The maximum value is 4. For the random generator, we'll also get the numbers between 0 and 4, but in a random order. For example, 3, 2, 0, 4, 3, 3, 1, and so on. How is that useful? Let me show you. I will create a new NF tables configuration. First, let's clear the configuration with flash rule set. Then let's create a new EPV4 table and call it LB. Then let's create a new chain and name it input. We'll attach to the input hook to target traffic coming to our server. Let's count TCP traffic to port 8080. Let's create another counter, but this time we'll add a condition. Apply this rule only if the number produced by our number generator is zero. Let's analyze this one more time. This line counts all incoming traffic to TCP port 8080. This line counts incoming traffic to TCP port 8080, but only if value returned by the generator is zero. Every time this rule gets a packet, the number generator returns a new number in sequence. Due to the mod2 statement, it will either return 0 or 1. If it returns 0, then the packet is counted. If it returns 1, then the packet is not counted. Let's try that. I will save the configuration, 
and load it. Now let's try connecting to port 8080 TCP on the localhost. Nothing is listening there, so we'll get a reset. But if we check our counters, we'll discover that both counters have increased and both got a SYN packet. Let's try connecting again. This time, the first counter that counts all traffic got increased, but the second counter was not increased. The generated number was 1 and 1 is not equal to 0, so this rule was not applied. Let's see how we can use a, a sequential number generator to balance traffic in a round-robin manner. In our network topology, we have a balancer that has two network interfaces. ETH0 connected to 192.168.10/24, that's the client network, and ETH1 that's connected to 172.27.96/20, that's the server network. On the client network, we have two client machines that will initiate the connections. On the server network, we have two servers running HTTP service on port 8080 TCP. Let's open our firewall configuration and update the chain name to pre-routing. Also, let's update the hook to pre-routing, type to NAT, and priority to DST NAT, as we'll be doing destination address translation. We'll match incoming traffic through the ETH0 interface, ensuring that the destination IP address is set to the ETH0 interface IP and the TCP port is set to 8080. For that traffic, we'll perform destination network address translation using values from a map. Map will have the following fields. 0 will map to 172.27.97.2, that's the IP of server 1. 1 will map to 172.27.97.3, that's the IP of server 2. Finally, let's add our number generator to produce sequential numbers with modulus set to 2. In other words, it will return 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. Let's go through the configuration one more time. For every connection to port 8080 TCP of the balancer IP, that's 192.168.10.30, the destination IP will be nutted to a value from the map where the key of the map will be the number generated by the number generator. So for the first connection, the generator will produce zero, so the connection will be nutted to 97.2. For the second connection, the generator will produce 1, so the connection will be nutted to 97.3. Another connection will generate 0 again and point back to server 1. Perfect round robin. Let's test our setup. I will reload the configuration. Now, let's go to our client machine and try connecting to our balancer a few times. Do you see that? It's balanced in round-robin fashion between server 1 and server 2. You can add more servers simply by increasing the mod parameter and adding the next entry in the map. You can also do uneven distribution. I will increase the modulus to 4 and duplicate last item. The server with dot .4 will receive double the traffic. Apart from sequential numbers, the generator can produce random numbers. For example, if I'd like to nut only 25% of the traffic to the first server and the remaining 75% to the other server, we could do something like this. We'll set up a number generator that will create random numbers from 0 to 99. If the drawn number is below 25, we'll nut the destination to server 1 else will not the destination to server 2. First rule will be applied with 25% probability. If the first rule doesn't apply, the second rule will come into play. To make it more readable, let's rewrite this as a map. We'll perform dnat to a map. The key will be randomly chosen from numbers between 0 and 99. We'll designate numbers 0 to 24 as the first key, with the corresponding value being the IP address of server 1. Then, as the key, let's pick 
25 to 99 and as the value the server to IP. Just to sum up, the number generator will randomly pick a number between 0 to 99. If the number is between 0 and 24, the traffic will be nutted to 172.27.97.2 Otherwise, the traffic will be nutted to 172.27.97.3. Load balancing in the round robin or weighted scheduling is not always the best choice. If your application requires maintaining session state or has other dependencies that require a client to always communicate with the same server, you should use a hash based distribution. With this approach, you can, for example, ensure that requests from the same client always go to the same server. Let's demo that. We'll remove the number generator and instead provide jhash that stands for Jenkins hash. Then we need to provide the key for the session affinity. I will put the IP source address. Basically, for the same client source IP, we'll get the same number. Then we need to provide the upper boundary for the numbers with the mod keyword. Because we have only two backend servers, I will set it to two. Next, let's update the map. For zero, it will be server one IP. For one, it will be server two IP. Let's go through the configuration one more time. If a client connects to port 8080 TCP on 10.30 IP via ETH0 interface, the destination IP will be nutted to either 172.27.97.2 or 172.27.97.3. The hash function will consistently assign either 0 or 1 for a given source IP address, ensuring that the assigned number remains constant across multiple invocations. For example, if the source IP is 10.33, it will assign 1, and for source IP 10.34, it will assign 0. To be precise, we don't know what number will be assigned, but we have guaranteed that each time it will be the same number for the same source IP. Let's save and reload the configuration. Now let's go to our client and run the connection test few times. Do you see that? We are directed to the same backend server over and over again. If I go to a different client and rerun the test, we are also consistently directed to the same server. So if your application requires session affinity and all subsequent requests needs to go to the same server, then Hashing is the way to go. We can also uh, create a hash based on a combination of values. For example, I can add a TCP destination port to the mix. This will generate the same value for IP source address and TCP destination port. For source IP 10.33 and destination port 8080, we'll get one every time. But for same IP, that's 10.33 and destination port 8081, we'll get zero, and so on. NF tables allows you to easily load balance your traffic among backend servers using number generators, hashes, and destination address translation. You should use an incremental counter for round robin scheduling, a random number generation for weighted scheduling and hash function for persistence. Mind that checking if the backend server is active needs to happen outside of NF tables. In future videos, when we're talking about Kubernetes networking, you'll see how this technique is utilized. So please stay tuned.